I want to go back to the NDIS, which we've talked about before. Have a look at what one of the NDIS architects has had to, uh, a warning, what he's saying about where it's all heading. Let me put it this way. We must stop thinking of the NDIS as though it is a limitless magic pudding. What has become clear is that often without intending to, governments, service providers and some people with disability and their families have all started to treat the NDIS as a limitless resource. Tanvir, uh, magic pudding. Well, look, to be honest, I'm really impressed. All these years, both sides of government have tiptoed around just the excess of the NDIS. And this is great that someone with a key role in potentially fixing it is telling the truth. So I think that alone is a huge step. Because uh, normally if this, you right? try and say that, people say you're sort of bashing up on exactly. the disabled and all this sort of thing, but, but there is excess and it Ex needs to be and he's an architect, And he's saying that it's systemic. It's not even rorts as such, that the whole system is set up this way. So we can't sort of go, oh, he's a bad apple, that's a raw... It's not... It's, it, the whole system is set up that way. Yeah. Some other key points here. The price signals are wrong. He was also talking about, and this is, I think, really important, the current system is set up to be called disabled and stay disabled. Yeah. Yet there's all sorts of conditions that can be treated and people improve, right? That's... And the current setup of the NDS does not allow for that. Yeah. I think that's a critical change. It, it is. Uh, before I come to you, Claire, let's have a look at what the minister, the responsible minister, Bill Shorten, says. It's pretty impressive too, I think. One thing I do want to put some service providers on notice is we want to stamp out the habit that when some service providers hear a family or a person has an NDIS package, they double the price of the service. That's not on anymore. Well, when I say that's impressive, Claire, it, it's frank. He's up front. That's what's going on. Pe people who are providing will, will charge more because they know it's coming from the government. But it's his job to make sure that doesn't happen. It's his job to make sure that the NDIS is only paying reasonable prices. Oh, absolutely. It's like having a wedding and ringing a florist. As soon as you say you've got NDIS funding, that's it. The price doubles. Um, and, you know, there's over-servicing, uh, there's over-pricing, and there's downright fraud as well going on with service providers. So, I mean, as much as I work with children, I actually try and stick away from NDIS kind of clients. So because it, it, it's just... It's a minefield. And then, you know... It, it's not the individual's fault, like Tanvi was saying, it's actually the system how it's geared. And it's geared to have individuals and families present themselves in the most negative light um, to get, you know, on average, I think it's $60,000 um, per participant. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we know the biggest growing number here are children um, on NDIS. And I think it's about 20% of children will have some kind of learning difficulty or mental health difficulty or developmental difficulty, 20%. Um, we can't cater to funding all that. No. And, you know, I think that, yeah, I, I agree with Champion. There's some great points remarked in this review. And, and one of them is that NDIS is the only option for people. So it, it, everything is driven towards NDIS. Just a final point, Chris. The NDIS will potentially make Australia the most disabled nation mm. on earth. Yeah. So many, yeah, that, that point uh, mm. it caps it off brilliantly. Yeah, we've mm. got to get onto it. They're saying the right thing, but a lot of work to be done mm. to fix things up. Thanks for joining us, Tanvir Ahmed and Claire Rowe. We